Rabbi Friedman, that is actually my question. I mean, this time around too, the, we had younger and older and everywhere in the middle women and it age was not a factor whatsoever everybody was very interested in being together learning together um growing together but this aspect of spirituality on high how do you explain that how do you explain that because realistically it's 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 just it it feels like it truly is an out of body slightly out of body experience it seems like the physicality stops to matter and it becomes such a unity of spirit i i'm a little bit worried to sound insane right now <laughs> you know uh and Go ahead, take, take a chance I, I am i'm actually taking a chance because this is the second time i felt it i felt like out of body experience that's the best that i can do can explain it without drugs without alcohol <laughs> without any kind of uh, special effects just by being there just by being together just by studying what do you think causes this and i know i'm not the one who felt this i mean i don't want to sound like you know i don't want to add more to it than what it is because what it is is amazing and uh, truly something that uh, you know, you feel so comfortable. You feel like there's no threat. You know, this is probably the only place that I felt more comfortable than anywhere else to be myself and um, to learn and to interact. And it, it's, it, I felt very safe. And I think every woman there feels exactly that. Not that that's what we go there for. This is just an incredible side effect. Um, can you explain why this is happening? Um, you know, and I'm sure it's been probably something that everybody has been um, saying to you all along th from the year 1971 since this uh, organization was formed and since yeah, yeah. this has been happening. We had one woman, maybe in the, in the 80s, who was a, uh, a therapist psychologist, uh, social worker, whatever. She was there for a couple of days and she was, she was puzzled. People felt safer in the environment there at Beis Hana than they do when they come to her for counseling. Her clients don't feel as safe with her as all these people felt with each other at this at this uh, retreat so safety feeling safe is it, yeah it's a very common reaction that people are taken by surprise they open up they're completely honest with each other they say things they never told anybody else including their therapists so actually rather than describing it as an out-of-body experience it was an experience where you actually felt in your body and it was okay it was an unusual in-body experience <laughs> because the discomforts of life the pressures the tension the anxiety doesn't let you settle into your body. That's the disturbance of anxiety. When you feel really safe, you're okay with your own body. And there's peace between your body and your soul. So it could be like, oh boy, I'm feeling my soul more than ever. So this is an out-of-body experience. And on the other hand, I'm totally comfortable with my body, so it's an in-body experience. It's the harmony between body and soul. And it comes not because of something that we're doing, but because of the things we don't do. There is no expectation, no demands, no, no agenda. Come, we'll be Jewish. 
Who be Jewish? What kind of Jew? Don't care. Don't care. Come and enjoy being a Jew. How will that express itself? Who knows? Maybe you'll eat more cholent. I don't know. Doesn't matter. So there's no drugs. There's no, there's no anything. It's completely free of, of, of agenda, free of expectation, free of demand. Nice to be Jewish, no? Yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's all we're going to say. We want to talk about Jewish history, Jewish stories, Jew fine, whatever you want. Rabbi Friedman, and there's um, another thing that is an incredible side effect. Um, you know, we come in and, and we kind of judge this world a little bit like, this is my kind of thing and this is not my kind of thing. This is my kind of person. This is not my kind of person. And what has happened to me absolutely twice, okay, the, in the first retreat and the second retreat, is that the person who initially I thought was the least my kind, you know, uh, turned out to be the most. <laughs> and it was, you know, I, I, I go to Beis Hanna without expectation. Well, I'll be honest, the first time I went was with expectation uh, to have uh, be around you in the 3D uh, environment where we're not on Zoom, but where we can actually hear your lectures live. And that was the reason why I initially uh, went to um, Beis Hanna. But that, that is amazing, but it's not... It was not the thing as I as I thought it would be, uh, <laughs> Friedman. Of course, it's. It, it, please understand that this is a, a huge honor to be in your presence always. But well, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> but uh, the things that you totally uh, don't expect happen. So the person who I I thought would be, would be least of my kind of person turned out to be the most important. Im impressive and amazing person that I got to know and again this happened two times in a row last year and this year and uh, you know the whole world is looking for love everybody wants love everybody is seeking out love and everybody goes somewhere and God is about love and uh, major concerts you feel the love and everybody wants this love feeling I do not go to base Hana for love, but this is exactly what I get. Uh, the feeling of love is overwhelming. When you take a look at each one of these women there, after first few hours, even less than that, you it's everyone is an incredible universe, an incredible story, an incredible energy, and and you cannot help yourself but feel this love towards another person, another human being who is there. Again, at the risk of sounding insane, this is what I felt and this is what absolutely every single woman there felt and we're still on chats and we're still can't get enough of each other and this keeps on going. What is this? How is this caused? Why is it so easy there and it's not so easy for us in our everyday life? Because we all want it, and it's the same, the same uh, cause, the same. When, when you're relieved of all your anxieties and should be and what what needs to be and what, and you're just allowed to be yourself, people are very nice. <laughs> just just relax, you know, and and when they have nothing but Judaism in common. You make friends like, yeah, like no place else. Because you're completely honest with each other. There's no way you can impress the other women. There's no way they can impress you. Because no, no, nothing matters. And yet, you're idealistic, 
you're looking for something, you want to be better, you want to grow. The word safe really does describe you're safe with your body and you're safe with your soul. That doesn't happen. If you go to a spiritual retreat, you're not so safe with your body. If you go to a spa, you're not so safe with your soul. <laughs> to, be, to be completely comfortable with your body and your soul at the same time, it's a little heavenly. So, a lot heavenly, I would say, for yeah. sure. So when people are that relaxed, only goodness comes out. Because why not? Being, being good is the right thing. Being good is what we all want. And yet it seems so difficult to get there because of all the noise and all the distractions and all the demands and all the needs that we think we have. You come to Beis Chana and the first message is, you don't need anything. We'll provide. You don't need anything. Except to get comfortable and listen. All of a sudden, all those burdens fall away. No expectations. You can ask any question you want. You can off offer any opinion you want. People will either agree with you or disagree with you, but they will enjoy your conversation because nobody's threatening. Nobody's out to get anybody else. Nobody's recruiting you to their cause not even the cause of Judaism. Because the fact that you're Jewish and you're there for a Jewish event can't be better. The rest is commentary. <laughs> Jews enjoying Jews. There's nothing better. There is nothing better. So the prerequisite is to be Jewish to feel this way? <laughs> That is one of the, yeah, prerequisites. <laughs> Rabbi Friedman, did you know that this is going to turn out this way? Is it something that was pre-planned? Because usually any organization has a mission statement that we want to accomplish this. This is the reason for our formation and our work. Um, well, it, it's, it's really consistent with the feminine psyche. If it was a group of men, it wouldn't be that safe. Because there are so many mitzvahs daily that you have to be doing. Well, every day goes by, you don't do it. There's, there's tension, there's pressure, there's expectation. And as a result, there is resistance. I don't like I don't like tension. I don't like expectations. So I will not do the mitzvah and you will not convince me. There's always something going on with men because men are always trying to achieve something or prove something. Women don't need that. Women love what is perfect in the world and just leave them alone to enjoy the goodness of the world and they're they're fine. Men don't like that. What, what do you mean everything's good? Then, then what am I here for? You got to find something that's not good that I can fix for you. Otherwise, I feel useless. So with men, it's, it's always more of an agenda. A good agenda. But the feminine psyche is, if everything is perfect, wow, that's perfect. You can actually get excited because there is nothing to fix. Men get depressed if there's nothing to fix. So it's a very feminine approach to Judaism. You are Jewish. You will always be Jewish. You're as Jewish as you can get. Relax. Relax. 